Welcome to Slash Forward. In this episode, we're going to duck and weave around some gratuitous nudity and gore as we zip through the 2017 film about rape revenge, Revenge. Let's get to it. We open on a desert scene as a helicopter flies overhead, occupied by a couple of posh wankers. They're traveling to their weekend retreat, a high-end Airbnb in the middle of nowhere. With no neighbors for miles, you know it's only going to take a few minutes to get down to the gobbies. This is followed by a scene-setting interlude in which Rich gets a call from the old wifey, just checking in. We find out he feels bad about his choices in life. It's just things are so hard, you know, with the kids and whatnot. Nice job, a-hole. The next morning, Jen goes to casually grab a snack and is startled to discover they're not alone. Their intimate weekend has been crashed by Rich's business partners. They have a tradition of meeting up for a yearly trophy hunt and showed up a couple of days early. Later, they hang out by the pool and basically jizz their pants when Jen arrives. Then they enjoy the debauchery of wine, cigars, and pro wrestling. Dimitri takes the concept of the male gaze to extreme heights as he unsubtly gawks at Jen through binoculars from short range. Rich reveals to the group their helicopter pilot provided some peyote for the weekend, which he thinks is too dangerous, so he gives it to Jen to hide away somewhere. Then she comes back to put on a cheeky little dance show for Stan, who stands there for a bit before providing a few lame hip thrusts. Having seen enough, Rich drags her off, caveman style. The next morning, we discover that, having shared the intimate ritual of salsa semi-dancing, Stan considers Jen his property. Rich is away for the morning, and Dimitri is hung over, so Stan reveals his charms by standing around and staring, apparently waiting for her to just jump on his dick. He breaks out a classic one-eyed peep, which she tries to play off. He then sits down to talk to her, sans chin. He asks her, What is it you don't like about me? Uh, your entire demeanor. Unable to take the constructive criticism he asked for, he escalates the situation. Dimitri walks in momentarily, and given the choice, he shows his true dirtbag character, walking away as Stan rapes her. Rich shows up and momentarily acts like an ally, only to eventually reveal that his solution is less about justice and integrity, and more about getting her a job in Canada. When she mentions his family, it firmly turns him against her. She gets upset and runs off, and they give chase, each according to their varying degrees of fitness. Rich fakes a call to the chopper to make her comfortable and then pushes her off the cliff. He insists they go on their hunt and then come to handle her body later. Afterward, they're to go home and act as normal as is possible for a trio of business bro psychos. Jen manages to eventually wake up and weaken the tree, allowing her to get off it and drag herself to a hiding spot. They show up after finishing their Mad Max cosplay to find the tree empty, meaning they're now hunting the most dangerous game. They follow the trail of blood to a body of water, splitting up to improve their odds of finding her. We see that she ended up in Dimitri's direction and comes upon an opportunity too enticing to pass up. Unfortunately, that crafty bastard likes to feign vulnerability to attract his prey. She responds to this news by double-tapping him with a knife in the face. She then drives off until the gas runs out and finds shelter in a cave. She's momentarily distressed at the fact that she's now part tree, but then remembers the peyote. And as we all know, if there's anything that goes well with hallucinogens, it's guns and field surgery. So she then proceeds to trip balls and cauterize her wound. Ritz wakes up Stan in a charming way. They, apparently, assume Dimitri's absence is all good. Stan washes up in the river, only to find the water and sanitary. They dispose of the body lazily, and then come up with a new plan that involves continuing to search. Meanwhile, Jen wakes up, finding the peyote trip to be the best decision of her life. She's all healed up, full tank of blood, and new tattoo. But she doesn't get far. <laughs> Brolsh. Turns out all the positives just mentioned are still true, but she finds herself inside a nesting doll of dreams before waking up for realsies, after which she gets to high ground and surveys the land. The boys have found the four-wheeler, so they know she's close. They split off again with a plan to trace a large circumference, meeting back at their current position if they don't find her. Jen catches a glimmer from Stan checking his face in a mirror, then spies his Range Rover coming into view. She pursues him as he slowly makes his way up the mountain. When he has to stop for gas, she takes the opportunity to try her new artillery. She sets him in her sights, patiently waits for the right moment and then takes her shot, winging him severely. And if I could coin a phrase, the hunter then becomes the hunted. Huh? as she descends upon his location to finish him off. Unfortunately, he has vacated the area. Fortunately, he's leaving a rather obvious trail of blood. He's running off like a wild beast, but manages to see his trail and attempts to stem the flow. This allows him to give her the slip as she ends up past him, giving him time to trace a bead on her. However, his injury makes accuracy problematic, and he only manages to gauge her ear, which goes well with a new tap. She runs off and smashes her flashlight glass along the way, knowing he's partially bootless. This works way better than expectations as he trips and screams like a little bitch. We then experience the joy of lingering on his gaping wound for a period of time as Stan, determined to remove the glass, basically makes finger love to his foot, although he does eventually remove it. Now insane with rage, he gets the rover and rockets down the dirt path, but Jen is able to coolly put a slug through his headrest. Meanwhile, Rich has been unable to raise Stan on the radio, so he eventually packs it in and heads home. He decides he's a quitter and calls in the chopper, making sure to mention the others have already left for the airport. Then he goes to get cleaned up and reflect on his poor behavior. He thinks he hears something, so he gets his gun and clears the house. 
house, balls to the wind. Thinking he's good to relax, he takes a seat in the main room, only to look out and see Jen. He attempts to talk, but she has no chill and opts to turn a portion of his torso into hamburger meat instead. They basically run in circles around the main portion of the house before he calls time out to try and stop his bleeding, even though he's basically lost all of his blood already. They continue running until Jen slips and falls. This gives Rich a momentary advantage, but he squanders it on lectures, which, to her, only sounds like a grown-up in a Peanuts animated special. The only moment when that was possible was when I... And then she interjects with that full, hardcore penetration followed up by a kill shot. She then wanders out into the sunlight as sounds of the helicopter roll through the valley. And that was Revenge. It's basically an exploitation film, but with substance and a high level of artistry. I highly recommend it. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.